Hey everyone, Blake LaGrange here from Mastering.com. Today we're chatting with Diego Salgado Sanchez and we're going to take a look at how he was able to increase the sonic quality of his masters, master himself, and actually get signed to a label for his own release. So let's check it out. For people who don't know who you are and what you do, could you give kind of just like a general kind of background on who you are, what you do, what kind of music you produce. I mean, all that stuff. I go under your name, uh, I guess a DJ name, your evil boyfriend. I didn't come up with the name. A girl gave it to me. So I basically, I learned to embrace the good and my dark side, whatever that means. <laughs> and well, then uh, I'm, a, I'm a music producer. I work with rappers. I do a lot of like mixing for them. And then I also make my own like music, which is in the electronic dance music scene. I make anything from house to future bass to dubstep. And I just got my first record signed. Ooh, I can't wait to hear more about that, man. Yeah. You're in the EDM world for yourself as an artist, as DJ artist. And then yep. you also do mixing for like hip hop and rap and stuff like that. So that's sort of your, yep. your thing. <clears throat> Obviously we've been working together before our conversation, before you dove in to this sort of the mastering process here with me, I want to know what it was like, I guess, before you and I, talked and you started working together like we started working together like where were you before in terms of the mastering quality in terms of where you were as an artist and some of the things that were really frustrating you and kind of the reasons why you're like okay I really should overcome kind of the mastering hurdle what was some of that stuff going on you know before we chatted so before Blake Lagrange I was um, basically doing everything how I learned from like different uh, production academies Sure. Right. So I'm not going to name any of them, but like there was basically like a very specific way of doing every single thing. So like you put the compressor, the EQ in this way, then you saturate stuff. And then it was sounding okay. But then when you would compare it against like whatever the industry standard was, it wouldn't necessarily match up all the time. And then I was trying to get a couple of records signed. And then um, like I, I got the mastering back from the mastering houses and I was just never really satisfied how it sounded. It just sounded like, yeah, I mean, it's, good but it doesn't want it to sound exactly it doesn't sound exactly how i want it in a way so that's kind of how, how i was before you know working with you so you would send out your tracks to get mastered in hopes that you would go to a label and see if you can get it signed basically would you, i mean and then you would also do it yourself as well so like what was it like doing it yourself before we ch started chatting and then also sending it out what were you noticing in your masters as opposed to like the professionals I mean, what was sort of the internal okay. struggle behind that? Like, I'm, I'm curious to know that. The mastering chain was it's exactly in this order. Uh, Sonox inflator, SSL at ratio four, maximum attack, either 1.1 1, 1, uh, release or auto. Then the Puig. Then if you had money, you would have gotten the Shadow Hills. <laughs> and then you would have done like a multi-band compressor and then an imager. And then... I guess the L2. It was very robotic. It was very like, yeah, just get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then obviously you would throw EQ here and there. But I don't know. I never felt like I was actually mastering. I just kind of just felt like something that I had to do at the end. Mm. Kind of like getting dessert at the end of the <laughs> of a meal. It's kind of like, yeah, you just have to have dessert. <laughs> so it, it, it was kind of in, in, in that sense. It never felt like I was actually, I didn't know mastering was a thing that you actually had to like work at. Right. I thought it was just like a thing that you just did at the end, right? Yeah. So after, you know, working with you, totally different. For sure. Got it. Okay. So, and then you would send it off to kind of some mastering house or whatever, say, oh, I probably should do this properly. And then you get it back. And then were you more frustrated that like you, it wasn't living up to the expectations that you had or, or were you more frustrated that you weren't able to do it yourself? I mean, what was, what was that for you, I guess? I mean, it wasn't so much that I couldn't do it myself. I was just not satisfied with the product. They would change the tone of how it sounds. So like, for example, like I like to have myself like somewhat bright. The, what I would get back would just be like very like commercial sounding, but it didn't really sound like how I wanted it to sound. So I was just like, yeah, it sounds good, but I don't want it to sound like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. So the whole, it was just kind of like, ugh, I mean, if this is what it takes and I have to like compromise how it sounds, I, I don't think this is the way it's supposed to be. Sure. Right? There's no way like there's other artists that like get a master box and they're just like stoked. Like, yeah, man, it doesn't sound like me. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I guess but, the, yeah. hope, the hope for you was like, was it twofold? It seems like it, it was, yeah, you're doing mixing for rappers and stuff like that. But it seems like the main reason you kind of outsourced that and wanted to get that dialed in is that you could 
basically in hopes, as you mentioned, go to a label, get signed with it and so forth. And so was it more that? Was it more like trying to get signed to a label or was it more like, you know, I'd also want to be doing this for like my rap mixing and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. So another thing that I was noticing, well, depending on the rapper, the ones that just keep their voice very simple, it was pretty easy to mix them. But the ones that go crazy with like reverb throws or like effects, I have a guy that just uses vocoder like nonstop. <laughs> so that was always a little bit challenging. And I was like, oh, maybe I need to learn more because like even if it's in a mix, I don't know if the mastering guy is having like a like a hard time with it. So I was like, nah, I should probably learn it. And maybe I can probably just get more money out of these people, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> so I was like, mm, if I can do like mixing or mastering, of course, right? Sure. But yeah, it, it was more like for me. Because like I just didn't like how the mastering sound on my side I was, was coming back, even though I was paying money for it. I was like, mm, still not right. Okay, so then you and I chatted, had a good talk, and I kind of like, okay, I know where Diego's at. I kind of know where he wants to go. And you dove in, and now we're, we started working together. I guess for people listening, like, what was it like for you diving first immediately into this? And then like, what has the process been like? What is what like? I mean, you go through a lot of transformation, right? And so I'm just curious to know for you personally. What is the process like going through, you know, Mastering Accelerator? The first week, it was a lot of just like, forget everything you know. So I went in with an open mind. And then as soon as you started touching the EQ, I was like, oh, that is very different from what I've heard before. And then obviously, the amount of homework that you gave us is insane, which is pretty dope. I actually liked it a lot because they just put like this invisible pressure. It's like, get it done or you're not going to make it, man. So I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I, cool. I like the amount of like assignments you got us to do. When it gone to compression, that was like, like yeah, like my whole compression game has changed altogether because I was just doing compression for like the sake of just like taming transients, right. but never really understanding what an E is for, re not really understanding what a ratio is for, really understanding what the point of compression is. Like even when you talk about like, yeah, just making a song sound alive, I was like, oh, that's what it's for. It's not just to like tame stuff. Right. So I, I thought I was just making sandwiches nonstop. I was like, no, 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 you got to like, make the sandwich be flavorful you know what i mean right so got it and then obviously yeah dan was was pretty dope too so for sure man yeah so like what was it like for you in terms of managing like <clears throat> your mixing projects as well as your own projects as well as going through all of the action items and going through like the q and a's i mean everything like how are you able to manage it with like your busy schedule? Like how did it fit within it? Literally every day I would do minimum an hour or unless it was like one of those longer video ones, then I would like sit aside on the weekend. Right. And then I just felt if I would let it drag on and I wouldn't commit to the assignments, I wouldn't gotten the results that I've gotten. So basically what I did is just like wake up, go to work, come back, watch your video. And then, you know, if the video wasn't like too long, then obviously just plow through it and just go do the assignments right away on the first day. Right. Right. If it was a longer one, then I'll have to be like, okay, so I need like more time to set it apart. Right. Then, yeah, I would just, if I watch this lesson, I would have to finish it and then do the assignment right away. Otherwise it just wasn't clicking. It, it wasn't, it was not going to work. Yeah. I mean, you had to be diligent to, to schedule it all out. So it worked for you, obviously in terms of just the content itself. I mean, there's a lot of things you're having to go through. Obviously, we're on Q&A calls together and stuff like this. Whether it be Q&A interaction, whether it be some content, as you're going through the process, what were the things that were most like, oh, like eye-opening or changing or, or whatever it may be, like things that like kind of really changed the way you thought through things? The, the whole concept about removing the blanket from the song and the plugin they introduced, like I thought that was insane. That blew my mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The, the way you use the the Puig, that was also like pretty insane. Because I, 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 like again, like I never understood like what you were supposed to do in EQ from a mastering perspective. So it was totally different. Anything that had to do. Yeah, no, for me, like the, the biggest thing was like EQing. The limiting part when you were talking about like the ranges or whatever and how to like understand LUFS, RMS and all that stuff. Like that was like a, a good reference for it to start. And then when you start getting competitive with like, you know, the other stuff like Skrillex stuff, right? Which is like right. negative three and you're just right. kind of like, okay, that's, <laughs> that, that's crazy. You, know, you might have to change your processing, but you know, like it, it was like good enough to get to a level like, yeah, this sounds good. And then from there you can like, you know, push it even further. Right. right. Totally, man. So, but for me, like hundred percent, like the EQ and the EQ and compression was pretty, pretty insane. Yeah. Pretty insane. I mean, with your genre, like doing electronic t dance music, it's where it all comes down to. It needs to be loud, but you can't get that with just throwing limiters on it. it. As you know, it's you need to try to understand the sonic spectrum and have perceived loudness and so forth. So 
yeah, I mean, it's obviously very important for what you're doing. So, okay, let's talk about you kind of where you're at right now. I mean, obviously we can go on about what the process has been like and so forth, but I mean, you've done some cool things and I'm curious to hear like where you're at now, what you've been able to do, where your master's at, you're even just your mixing clients with rapping, with the rapping and I mean, all of this stuff. I mean, just getting signed. I mean, just like there's so much I want to hear about. So I guess where, where are you at now? So yeah, so when I start, when I start telling like uh, my rapper clients that I was going to be taking a class on mastering, like, oh yeah, man, stoked to like hear how it sounds. And obviously when they told me, as soon as I send them like the first master, halfway through the course they were like oh man this sounds already like really good Are you, you finished the course i'm like no nah, man i'm halfway <laughs> so then like as i kept going i was like oh okay. and i i don't know they were just like very excited of like they could, they could see, hear the progression per job that i would complete for them basically sure and then uh, they'd be stoked and like a couple of them like they don't even send their um, masters to another guy anymore they send it to me so that's pretty dope. And then uh, on my side of things, yeah, so like I started pitching to labels. And then before, like sometimes I get emails like, yeah, it sounds okay, but it's not ready yet. Or like this needs, uh-huh. like send it to somebody. Right now, the emails that I get is like, oh, uh, yeah, sounds amazing. It's just unfortunately it doesn't sound for a label. Right. Or like the one that was like, that signed it, it was like, hey, man, this is amazing. Actually, like we want to put, you know, a bunch of resources towards it and it's going to be awesome. So they like the mastering so much, like they, they wanted to do like, an acoustic version of the of the vocal song. Okay. And I don't know, like a bunch of remixes. So I'm stoked to see where that goes. But, you know, I mean, getting, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy. Like, yeah, yeah. Getting it to a place where they're sending, like, they're saying, yeah, great track, but you, could you change this? Or maybe it doesn't sound right. Like, that's obviously very frustrating. But for them to say, like, sounds awesome. Well, let's keep talking. <laughs> like, that's opening the door for you. And so this label that you were able to get signed to for this, is it is it kind of a... a a, a label you don't really like? Is it one that you love? I mean, like, I'm just curious as to like, what were your, what are your expectations about working with labels? The ones that rejected me, they were basically like, I, I probably wanted to sign with them. Right. Right. But they, they say like my sounds a little bit too different. And I don't, I don't understand the whole label politics yet. about like, they have to make like a specific sound while still being kind of new. So maybe I still haven't found that thing. You know, that's not a mastering thing, but right. that's it. But the one that signed me that was just really stoked on like having, you know, interesting music that's not necessarily, you know, preset-y or whatever. So, right, for sure. The label that I got signed to, like, I'm just stoked because there was just like, a, this sounds amazing. Like, yeah, if uh, there's any any more opportunities, I'll let you know right away. And then they're just like, I'm, I'm just happy right now with, yeah, with, with what's, sure. what's going on with, with the label. Dude, it's so mm-hmm. cool. I can't wait to hear, like, just the release and everything. What's next for you, man? I mean, you have the kind of this new skill set. You're kind of a different person. You'll be able to produce, you know, sonically industry standard stuff and you have the artists or rappers that you're working with and you're doing mixing. I mean, uh, there's so many things I could piece together of how this could be applied, but what's the plan? Like, how is it, how do you imagine this, you know, rolling out moving forward? Like what's, what's next, I guess. So for me, I'm just going to keep going through the action items, right. Of the last week and just trying to get more clients, like even just DMing people on SoundCloud, like that's probably <laughs> the best way to, yeah. uh, to, to get like somebody that may, might be interested in to you know, get a client. Like, I don't know, like sometimes I would just send them like a halfway master just to like, like, hey man, here's like a preview. It's, I still haven't put a limit on it. I already put like EQ compression. Sure. And then he's like, how does this sound? And just kind of like to tease it a little bit. And they're like, oh yeah, this sounds pretty dope. Is it done? I'm like, no, but like, <laughs> it'll be done soon. So I'm, I'm just kind of... <laughs> I'm just like kind of like saying, like, you know how like artists release like teasers? Yeah. Right. So I'm just doing that with clients. I'm just like teasing them. I'm like, yeah, this is almost that. Check it out. So <laughs> that's, yeah, like that's, pretty, that, that's, that's basically what I already. do. I mean, you do that with your clients already where it's just like you're halfway through working with through the content of Mastering Accelerator and it's like, oh, wow, did you finish? It's like, no, I'm just, I'm halfway through. That's super cool. I guess I want to know this, man. Yeah. It, for people who are who are kind of who maybe have had a conversation with me and are on the fence about diving into to what you did, Mastering Accelerator, and working with me on this, like, what would you say to them? Would you recommend this? I mean, kind of, what are your thoughts there? So, a hundred percent worth. Just because, like, if you were been doing production, just following the production site, if you've been doing this for a while and you're wondering, hey, I can't get stuff to just be as as live as they should be, like this course by itself, like, will just achieve that if you ever wondered about like being loud proud but still clear this exactly would do it for you really understanding like sometimes like your song sounds amazing in your studio you play in the club sounds questionable this will basically fix that <laughs> so no it's, it's, it's 100 percent like all the videos that i watch like every single one was just like just little gold nuggets 
here and there, how to improve your workflow, even just like organizing, right? So you never have to lose like customers' files. Like <laughs> that, that's happened to me once and I never want to feel that again. <laughs> so just even just organizing yourself, that's amazing. So yeah, definitely. It's been really cool seeing your progress already and congrats for just even being able to get signed to this label and just continue to improve. And I'm just so excited to see what else you're going to do. I mean, and, and you know this, I'm, I'm fully committed to, to partnering with you one-on-one to be able to come alongside you with your music or whether it's your clients or whatever. And so I'm fully devoted to you, man. So I'm super excited to see what's next. I guess impart some some wisdom or knowledge to, to maybe your former self or somebody who's maybe a few steps behind you. You know, what's, I guess, one piece of advice that you'd like to extend to them? I guess just be open-minded about how there's more than one way to do things better for you, or it might be like a hybrid. You should probably learn from somebody that's done things before, just because it'll they'll at least help you be like, Hey man, I've done that before. Maybe you should consider doing this instead. Or like, Oh yeah, that's cool. Like I've done that too. And then you can, you know, do this and this and this and this. It's just kind of like everything snowballs. If you just learn from the right person, be open-minded, but at the same time, like try to pick the right people to learn from. No, being radically open-minded is, is something that I'm very much uh, a fan of. So you're obviously like that and you're killing it and you're continuing to crush it. And so just super excited that we got to catch up and chat and just thank you for doing this. You know, if there's anything else you want to say, now's your time. If not, totally fine too. Uh, no, just love right, cool. the hair, Blake. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I love your background. <laughs> The background's working for you too. <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs>